So this film was based on a series of articles that won a Pulitzer Prize for local journalism uh, about crime and mob activity on the sort of New Jersey, New York waterfront. At the time, an incredibly lucrative operation. And uh, it was part of what made New York what it was. It was part of what made um, the Archdiocese of New York, uh, at least according to the, one of the historical special features on uh, the Criterion release of this film, part of what made, made the Archdiocese of New York the most powerful diocese in the country was all the money that uh, the do- donations it got from people who ran this waterfront stuff. Wow. Um, the union leaders who were you know, criminals and thugs at the time, and they just didn't look too closely at it. This was yeah. at the time of Cardinal Spellman. Um, there was this uh, priest who was basically Spellman's right-hand man, a father O'Donnell, who was living high on the hog, you know, driving a limousine around wow. from all this stuff. And, and, um, and uh, the, the guy who, the guys who, uh, you know, were uh, running this were respectable Catholics in, in society. So the, right. the, the upper boss who there's no character in this movie who corresponds to him, the upper boss who was really a society guy and respected by the church and the public face of it in terms of donations and things like that was a guy named John McCormick. I forget the name of the underboss who actually is the guy that um, Johnny friendly, the villain of this movie is based on. Yeah. And we really Um, only see the underboss in this film. There's one scene scene that indicates he's not the upper boss, but it indicates that maybe he's a politician or somebody powerful in New York city or New Jersey. There's one sort of nod in that direction that this is a lot bigger than just what's happening with Johnny friendly and, and Marlon Brando's character. Yeah. So, um, it's just, yeah, it's a very interesting story. So, um, where you get a connection to the priest in this film, we see two priests who are sort of local parish priests in yeah. the waterfront and area. And they reminded me of the two priests that we see in Calvary. Oh, totally. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if there was, you know, a, a, an inspiration there. Right. Uh, we don't see too much of the, you know, the, uh, second, the priest. second priest. He's not quite as obviously pathetic. As... But the lines that we get from him are, it's clear that he's invested in the status quo and in sort of, you know, not... Yeah. Not doing too much to. And this was true. I mean, the archdiocese wasn't looking too closely, and uh, and you know, um, maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't. Maybe there was only so much that they knew. But right. but um, uh, the the local parish priests were not were, were looking the other way right. for certain. And so you have this uh, Father Carey, a Jesuit who was the head of uh, something called the Xavier Labor School. He, uh, a bunch of waterfront workers, uh, dock workers came to him and said, hey, you know, we're having trouble getting enough pay to support our families here. We're, we're getting starved out because whenever we ask for more, they just don't give us work that day. And, you know, uh, so he said, okay, well, I'll talk to the, the boss down there and, and just ask him, you know, in, in charity to, to give you more. And so he does. And then within hours, he's getting calls from people all over the country, people from the uh, Housing Works Administration in in D.C. Uh, or, or if whatever the FDR's big New Deal thing was. Okay. I, don't the, I don't know if that's the name of it. But um, uh, saying, uh, don't get involved with this. Don't mess with this. Wow. And then uh, he's walking home to his, um, I don't know what you call it, the Jesuit residence. Um one day and uh father o'donnell who i mentioned being sort of like the the point man for this doc stuff and right hand man to cardinal spellman drives past his limousine picks him up offers him a ride home he's talking to him and he's like uh you know uh there's this there's this communist party headquarters on like 38th street or whatever in, in new york and i have to be careful what i say because if i if i were to give the address out publicly the next day that place would be bombed and then they go home. They they get to the their Jesuit place. He lets him out. And then as he's leaving the the limo, he he gets out a notepad. He says, oh, "By the way, uh, can I have your address?" <laughs> so that's the sort of situation Whoa. that was happening. So uh, Father Carey um, assigns another Jesuit, Father uh, Father um, Gosh uh, Father Pete Corridan, who the 
the priest father um, Barry in this film is based on uh, to go to the waterfront for two years just to study the situation and figure out what's going on. So he gets into it and he figures out all the different economic interrelationships, the relationship with the local church, um, all this stuff, and ends up getting in touch with a journalist who he spills all this stuff to and who writes this series of articles Wow. That wins a Pulitzer and that this film is based on. Wow. Then the journalist connects the screenwriter, Bud Schulberg, and later the director, Ilya Kazan, to the priest. And they actually meet him and spend a lot of time with him. They start going down to the docks and talking to the workers, hire a bunch so, of them on. So as the supporting priest was cast. involved in, in, the, in making the He movie. gave them information and he encouraged them to make it. He thought wow. this would be a way of helping. It turned out that this movie didn't change anything, uh-huh. but they, they were hoping that it would. Right. Uh, now, w- it, it was there in an out like... Um, an analogous character to Marlon Brando's? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. There was an analogous character to the priest and to the, the local union boss. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that there were situations. For example, in the Criterion edition, there's an interview with the guy who plays Tommy, who's the kid who helps take care of the pigeons on the yeah. roof. Yeah, yeah. That actor, he's interviewed as an older man, and his dad had been had died and probably been murdered for similar reasons to uh, Doyle, whatever his first name is, who gets killed at the beginning of the film. Uh, So this was all real stuff that that was going on. That's incredible. Yeah. um, I think that the priest in this movie is so cool. And the, the character, you know, a lot of times you see in, uh, (laughs) I'm just drinking. Sorry, I'm just very big, vigorously drinking my. This is literally called Haterade because it's a beer that tastes very similar to Gatorade. Uh, it's awesome. Now I know you're all groaning in disgust, but James is not a fruity beer guy as much as I am, and he can tell you that it's actually nice. You had no, it. I'm not going to go on the record. You said you that. liked it. You Thomas, said you liked it. I was saying it more for no, your you sake didn't. you said you didn't like it and that as it went on you volunteered with, without any pressure from me and said this actually gets better as you keep drinking <laughs> i guess that's true of beer in general uh, <laughs> oh dear it's very tasty um very tasty yeah haterade <laughs> uh <laughs> sponsor us please <laughs> finback brewery yes no um what was i saying yeah you know like i, I when i watch a, a priest characterization in film i'm always like very sensitive to Mm -hmm. like oh you know is this gonna be a good priest like would a real priest say that like you know i'm I'm a little more critical Mm -hmm. um but honestly you know everything that this priest did was just so awesome yeah even including like not hearing Marlon Brando's confession, you know, uh-huh. like I, not not turning him away, saying like you can wait in line and go to confession with Father George or whatever. Right. But like, what what does he say? He says like I'm going to get it out of you other ways, and and then he said I'll dig it up myself and use it as where it'll help the most. Yeah, you know, like that. and that's just like such a cool card to play. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not threatening, right? It's like he's he's reaching him and all of those longshoremen the way that they need to be reached, which is like with like a firm fatherly masculine hand, you know, like with a challenge really, you know, like he challenges Marlon Brando, he pushes him away even. And it's, it's like, uh, that's what, what causes his character. um, Terry, is that Terry Malloy? Yeah. That's what causes Terry to, to really trust him, you know? Um, so yeah, and they and they and yet they have similar arcs. It's just the priest gets to where he's going a lot faster. So the waterfront mob has asked Terry to help lure this guy up on the roof who's been threatening to talk to the uh, waterfront crime commission about their illegal activities. And so he helps to get him on the roof. He thinks that they're just going to lean on him and put pressure on him. He doesn't know that they're going to kill him. They push him off the roof, and we're introduced to Father Barry, who shows up along with the sister and the father of the guy who was killed. And, um, and uh, the sister Edie is really upset. And father Barry is kind of giving her some platitudes to comfort her. And he, she turns on him and uh, you know, basically says like, you're just, you're just giving me these platitudes. And, and uh, then he says something like, um, uh, 
I'll be in the, what did he say? I'll be in the church. I'll be in the church if you need me. And she says, you'll be in the church if you need me. Did you ever hear of a saint hiding in a church? Yeah. And you can tell that that affects him. And then the very next scene that you see him, he's saying like, you know, you were right. And he's basically all in on helping the waterfront workers. Yeah. Yeah. He says, you know, this is my parish. And, uh, uh, what there's like this amazing scene where, where he's down in the ship where they're load unloading one of these ships in from Ireland and one of the guys has gotten killed there and uh and he's like kind of chastising everyone for their silence and for yeah. their complicitness in 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 this yeah. status quo this evil status quo and um what is the line it says something like uh get back to church or something he says like this is Boys, this is my church yeah, yeah. oh yeah, and he man. points to the dead body yeah and so he's talking about christ that's one of the cool things about this priest in this movie is you do see priests good priests in movies but even in the in calvary the priest isn't really talking about jesus that's right you know he talks yeah. about forgiveness no he has he an amazing God, speech here and he's talking monologue. about christ he's talking about the crucifixion yeah he he's says jesus christ- is standing there out there with you on the line he sees why you're not chosen or why you are, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. And, uh, and, and he says, you know, every time, you know, this happens, it's another crucifixion, you know, which is like, yeah. Super steeped in yeah. spiritual truth, you know? But you know, let me go back to the, the real story. This was based on because even when he says like, uh, it's like, this is my church, that whole idea, or, or I'll be in the church if you need me. That was something that uh, Father O'Donnell had been quoted as, as saying the opposite. He said, essentially, I don't give invo- get involved with their business and they don't interfere with my spiritual wow. world. And so there really was this element. Or, and there was also a general expectation in society that priests were not to get involved in yeah, politics. Well, I mean, and, come on, this is a tale like, as old as time. Yeah, this is priests still are not supposed to get involved in. in politics. And of course, then in the in the late fifties and sixties, you have all these priests, many of them Jesuits, who do get involved yeah, in politics yeah, yeah. way too much and go in the opposite sure. direction sure. as activists. But um, in this case, we got a priest who gets involved, but it's very rooted in his parish, his duties. local community, yeah, you know, exactly. his being a father, a spiritual father. Yeah. And and also this waterfront business was vast majority Irish Catholic. So mm-hmm. all of these guys are Catholic. So yeah. they really are part of his parish. Right, right. You know? 